Well, hello! It's time for another exciting episode of Pens in Use. This is the show where I talk about the fountain pens and inks that I've been using throughout the week. So, let's dive into it. If videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens, both new and old, and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And, uh, what are your feelings on Park Rink? Do you think they uh, need to bring back some old colors? Uh, I realize I probably should ask that question last week when I was talking about um, private reserve, but hey, uh, better late than never. So, let's dive into the pens. So these are the fountain pens that I will be using this week. From right to left, I have a Vitosha from Bulgaria. I have a Matador 992 from Germany. A Pelican M800 from Germany. A Marshall from... I really have no idea. I was actually shocked that I've never reviewed this pen. So expect an upcoming review on this pen while it's inked up. <laughs> an Aurora 88, Lamy 2000, a Rex pen from Croatia, then part of Yugoslavia, a Schrade Tactical Fountain pen from somewhere. <laughs> I have reviewed this one, it was a zombie review. Uh, Pelican Stola 3 from Germany, and a Waterman Hemisphere from France. As always, I will be doing my writing samples in this beautiful cognitive surplus seafood flavored journal. So my first pen comes to us from Bulgaria. I have done a video on this pen. This is a Vitosha, uh, so named for a mountain. I'm trying to remember, yeah. Sort of, I guess it's by uh, Sophia. And that photo, that photographs horribly i'll <laughs> just say that but anyway it you know the finish is a little rough but and uh i i would love an ink window because it is a piston filler in fact this pen is my very first piston pe pen i've ever fixed the nib you know nothing special although it is a 14 carat and very covered with condensation Okay, never mind. 14 karat gold plate. I was thinking, I don't remember this being a gold nib. Uh, kind of a very, very specific sweet spot on it. You get off that sweet spot and suddenly you're gouging paper. While you're on the sweet spot, it's actually a fairly nice writer. See, I just gouged. Vitosha. Uh, I'm not going to attempt the Cyrillic writing because, you know, I don't write in Cyrillic. So the ink in it is Ackermann. Grunmarkt. Smaragd. Uh, I will be honest, it's not a green that fills me with excitement. But uh, I do like the bottle quite a lot. So I will be uh, saving this bottle after... I use up the ink, which will be quite a while, because if you know Ackermann, their bottles are huge. So I'm going to be running out of Iroshizuku inks long before I run out of this one Ackermann ink I own. And I don't know, other than the bottle, and I've only tried one, but their colors just don't do much for me. Am I allowed to have that opinion? Yes, their bottles are legendary, but the colors just don't thrill me huge amounts. So, anyway, my next pen is going to be a Matador 992. I've had this inked for a week or two. Nice German pen. Actually has kind of a nifty spirally ink window, if you can make it out there. But the ink is still in it, so hard to make out. Matador 992. Believe it or not, this is sold as an extra fine, although I don't quite believe it with this nib. And the ink in it is Birmingham Pens. Waterfront Dusk. Uh, 
Um, kind of a dark ink, I guess I, from the, and, and it could be the pen, let's be fair. But I guess I expected a little more color out of it, but not that I'm disappointed, I do kind of like it. It's just a very dark purple. Next pen, I talked about last week, except I called it a, uh, a, a, a Parker Green, Parker Quink Green. This is actually a Pelican M800. But I even wrote Pe Parker Quink Green in the, oops, there it is. Uh, when I did my writing sample, I, I, I guess I was talking and, and I had some suggestions about what that's called when you don't write what you're thinking or what you mean to write. Um, things like aphasia, ah, I hope not. So this is a Pelican M800. Uh, last week I had some samples of various Parker inks that uh, somebody had sent me. And this is one of them. Uh, they are all still inked up. I just haven't used them this week. So this is Parker Quink Green. Kind of a, oh, a fakey looking green. Not a bad color, just not anything special. But that's not, he wasn't sending it to me as a, wow, check out this vintage color, it's so amazing. He was sending it to me as a, well, this is a different kind of Parker Green than you have. How do I know that? Well, my next pen, this mysterious Marshall, which surprised me that I have not actually done a video on it. Uh, turns out to be, uh, I just decided to fill it with Parker Quink Green. It's got a cute, tiny little nib, too. Dang. So I think I really need to get that video filmed this week. <clears throat> Who knows when I'll broadcast it, but uh, uh, probably I'll film it next weekend, actually, because I'm tired. Ooh, and I see the tines don't quite align there. And yes, it really is spelled that way on the, on the pen, so I'm just going to go with that. So this one isn't really called my, but I'm going to label it as my, my Parker Quink Green. Oops. I think that was my fault there. So my green is a much uh, darker version of green. I don't know what it, that means, but uh, you know why they're different. Were they sold differently in different countries? Some of you guessed who sent it to me, but like I said, I didn't have his permission to say who sent them to me, so I'm keeping my mouth shut about who exactly sent these uh, samples of Parker Quink to me. But uh, it's it's interesting. Mine is just a lot darker than his. And then he started looking through his collection, and he found out he had a dark one also that's just like mine. So I don't know what's up with that. I'm kind of thinking I'm going to reciprocate, send him a couple Noodler's inks. He... <laughs> May curse me for it, I don't know. But we'll see. This is a uh, Aurora 88. It's a vintage one. Ooh, maybe I should send him a sample of what's in this. This one's kind of a fun ink. Uh, for personal reasons more than uh, color reasons, although it's not a bad color. So it's a vintage Aurora 88, which is... Um, there used to be this web, uh, this channel on YouTube. What was it? Pell Hale, Pell... Holly, something like that. And he had, I don't know, he, he did a lot of very interesting reflections. Then he'd go into pens in an incredible depth. Uh, Aurora 88, it's actually him that turned me on to the Aurora 88. But for some reason, he has taken all of his videos down. You know, I don't know why. I don't know what was going on there. there there's usually a story behind it that you're not necessarily privy to as a, a listener or a viewer. I uh, I like to think that you know, if I get 
so I don't want to do this YouTube thing anymore. I, I, I can see myself saying goodbye and uh, not doing any more videos. I can't think of a reason to take them down. I can think of reasons you may say, Ooh, God, I can't believe I said that in that video. I better take that one down. But taking down the whole channel, I don't know. But, again, I don't know his story. So, loss. I, he had some very interesting videos and a few that were on my list that wanted to watch. So this one is Birmingham Pens. And this one is Twilight. And originally it was called Allegheny River Twilight, which is what appealed to me because I, uh, well, I think I said last week, I graduated from Countersport uh, High School in Pennsylvania and the Allegheny River runs right through Countersport. Actually, if I remember correctly, it begins in uh, that county, although it doesn't begin in Countersport. So, that's Birmingham Penn's Twilight. The Allegheny River, by the time you get to Pittsburgh, is a teeny bit wider than it is in Countersport, Pennsylvania. Because it's had time to wander through New York State and uh, back through Pennsylvania some more. Uh, this is my Lamy 2000. Yeah, I've been using it. Not lots, but like I said, in a week or two, I'm going to have more free time. It's getting closer now. So this is a Lamy 2000 with a fine point nib. And it has the Pelican 4001. Brilliant black. I'm just thinking about what's ahead. My God, what a gloomy... I mean, not ugly colors, but what a gloomy collection of ink I have this week. Just nothing bright and cheerful. Okay, the last one might be bright and cheerful, but it's also a little controversial. Ooh, controversy in the fountain pen world. Drums! Uh, then we get to my Rex pen. I don't have a model for it. I have seen a Senator or a Mers and Krell that's kind of looks like this. But, uh, and, you know, there's your clue. I don't know the model of this. So I'm just going to go with uh, Rex pen, because that's what I called it in its review. And maybe someday I'll find out its model. It does have one of those amazing box, Bach nibs. And the ink in it is not written on my list, but I'm pretty sure I know which one. Colorverse Pale Blue Dot. Which definitely has some similarities with the My Parker Quink Green. It's, it's a nice color. I, you know, I bought this set of four inks from Colorverse. Uh, they were sort of space themed. Kind of like the themes and the bottles of the Colorverse inks, but I've never... Uh, I, don't know, I don't really feel any need to buy more, but then again, I've got more ink than I will ever use, so there is that. Years ago, in fact, it was during the last presidential election, I did a video about this pen, which is the Schrade Tactical Fountain Pen. Let's see if you can guess why. <laughs> and uh, I did it as the, uh, kind of in my basement, playing the role of a the survivor of a zombie apocalypse. And I've been going to film, and I haven't done it yet, um, a revisit to this pen. And I, I've been tossing around a few themes. I've hit on one. I just need to get to my location to film it. Maybe this is next weekend, because it sure didn't happen this weekend, because holy buckets was I busy. In fact, I was very tempted to just go to bed tonight and not film this, but I thought, no, if you don't do this, it'll be like Thursday night, and you're scrambling, or Friday night, and you're like, oh shoot, I'm late. So, I'm filming it, even though I kind of want to sleep. So, 
this is actually a discontinued model. I don't remember if the company is discontinued, but anyway, I'm going to do some kind of in-character uh, review of this pen. Zombies seem to be going out of style, although apparently Walking Dead is going to come out with some sequels. Um, will be. I'm not sure how much hunger there is for them now, but, you know, we'll see. I'm trying to remember the nib size. I think it's a medium. It's not written there. All right, let's just not write a nib size. Who cares? Uh, the ink in it is a Roshizuku Yamaguri. And I'll have to come up with some kind of a Roshizuku. <laughs> Sorry. I will have to come up with some sort of a story. Oh, no. Nice if I put that on screen. Some kind of a story to explain this color. Because last time it was zombie blood. So uh, I'll think up something appropriate to the theme of the video. You know, if I'd been thinking, I might have put a different ink in it, I don't know. Uh, you know, with thoughts of this video that I really need to film, because I decided to make it my election year, uh, um, not ritual, regular election year thing anyway, to do a revisit to this fountain pen and some kind of a re role play. So... Ready to be inked up again, but not quite. I have my Pelican Stola, which uh, came riding home tonight. In fact, two pens came riding home. Um, these are the only two pens I have left at school, this one and the next one. Uh, I've been using this one regularly, and darn, I keep refilling it and refilling it. I mean, it's seeing more use than the Lamy 2000. Now, which one do I like better? Lamy 2000. But as it turns out, the Stola is a darn nice pen. I mean, not exciting, <laughs> but I forgot the nib size, but it is a very nice pen. And the ink in it is actually native, Pelican 4001, brilliant black. That's a very flattened ink splatter. <laughs> can tell I'm getting tired. I mean, one of these days I'll film one of these like on a Saturday morning or a Sunday morning or something different and be wide awake. And you'll be like, what just happened there? Alrighty, and my last pen is the... Ooh, it's got a scratch! Darn it. And yeah, that's a scratch and a finish. So, anyway. I mean, it's being used, so that's why this happens. But, darn. Not a pee my pants and excitement pen. But it's a nice pen. And actually, I've decided I have... I put my uh, remaining Bay State Blue that I bought years ago when I first started going crazy with fountain pens. Uh, I, I put it in one of those Twisby Inkwell deals. And so I'm thinking I'm just going to take that to school so I can refill this at school. I mean, use up my Bay State Blue. It's guaranteed none of the kids have anything like it. Thank God. And at the time I first got this ink, this uh, Bay State Blue, I thought, wow, what an intense blue. But... Since then, I've found a number of inks that are just as intense, uh, perhaps without some of the side issues. Nothing against the color. It's a nice color, but uh, the side issues make me go, eh. So, Noodler's Bay State Blue. I have had my best luck with it in uh, very fine nib pens. But I've got one or two pen pals who write to me with, like, their stubs and their broads with this ink. And uh, 
I don't know how they do it because uh, I find it's a feathery bleedy mess if I use a really big nib now like this with this this nib I, I can use it even on the low quote low cost uh, school paper so whatever <laughs> So those are the pens and inks that I have inked this week. Okay. So those are the pens and inks that I've been using this week. Um, I, when I look at that page, I'm just like, wow, that's a dismal collection. I ran out of my Helianthus and uh, yeah, that's what I used this week. <laughs> so Bay State Blue was the only shot of brightness there. I uh, don't know what that means about my mood, but <laughs> there you go. So... Uh, you know, it's been a wild week. I'm just pulling up my thingies. Um, one of the things that's come up this week is we're seeing more kids and teachers uh, quarantined due to COVID or, you know, mostly close contact, but the occasional exposure where our cases are kind of inching up in the county and uh, nobody takes it seriously. Uh, still, so, I don't even know what you do about that. You know, I try to do my best to try not to be a close contact. You know, you have to be around people when you're a teacher, but I try to limit my time uh, so it's less than 15 minutes around an individual student or whatever. Uh, it is 24 or 15 minutes in a 24 hour period. So, our governor has this recent thing with a mask mandate where. Uh, you're not a close contact if you're both wearing masks, even if one of you tests positive. Hey guys, I'm not going to mandate masks or anything, but we're going to encourage it passively. Well, but I suppose one of the more depressing things this week was a uh, presidential debate. And I'm so happy I didn't watch it. But then again, I never watch them. I usually uh, wait till the next day and read about it. Um, I think I would have thrown something through my computer monitor if I would have tried watching it because... Oh, wow. It was uh, not a lot of content there and uh, absolutely hideous performance. You know, you, I, I always think of debates as this opportunity to, well, let's discuss health care, Mr. Biden and Mr. Trump. And Mr. Biden gives his views on health care. Mr. Trump gives his views. And we get a little bit of back and forth where they each question each other's and say, well, my plan does this. Does your plan cover this? And You know, where, where you can actually educate yourself on it. Instead of, oh, he asked a question about health care. Let's go off on a tangent that has nothing to do with it. Hey, let's attack the guy who was president before me. Oh, hey, let's interrupt over and over. Let's, let's interrupt ten times in three minutes. Um, and, and I won't say anybody was innocent of it because, wow. But, uh, yeah, it was definitely more on one side than the other. And uh, weak sauce moderating. Now, I'll be honest, I thought... I've thought for several presidential elections now, you need a mute. <laughs> this just made me sure of it. And I, you're actually hearing this being discussed in the mainstream now that, hey, maybe we should mute the guy when it's not his turn to talk. Because, uh, wow. And it's, perf what, why is it? I mean, partly it's his nature, but partly it's performance. You get to be the <clears throat> alpha male when you're interrupting and talking over people. And, uh, I just have no interest in that because that's all posturing. It means absolutely nothing about how strong you are. It just means you know how to act strong in a certain context. So, uh, yeah, that was a waste of time. Uh, coming up, we've got uh, this week, I guess. Tuesday, Wednesday, one night this week. See, you're watching this after it's happened, so we'll, we'll see what my opinions are. we got a vice presidential uh, debate. I... Uh, I don't think we're going to see the interrupting. I do think, because we've seen it, that at least the vice president is very evasive with answering questions, especially, you know, he, he's... N can't really oppose his boss. And that's an awkward spot when you're the running mate, because your running mate sets the tone. You might be like... I don't know if I agree with that, but you can't be really undermining it. Like, if my school does something, I'm just like, oh my god, that's stupid! I can't really come out and say, yeah, my school did this, it was really stupid. Because 
it's just unprofessional. But yeah, so Mike Pence and Kamala Harris are both in an awkward spot there. I, I don't care who your candidates are. You're, it's not like you agree with your president all the time, but you can't be like, well, Mr. Biden's just dumb with this thing. Yeah, you can't say that. So yeah, it's an awkward spot to be in. Uh, so we'll, we'll see how it turns out. And then, uh, you know, I, I guess uh, just doing the timeline... Um, I didn't write down what day it was, doggone it. Uh, but anyway, this week, Mr. Trump has been hospitalized with uh, COVID-19. And I'm not seeing how at this moment they can do the debate, uh, their next debate, which is the week after this. I guess I'll know the next time I film the show. <laughs> um, and you know it watching this, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm guessing because of the exposure thing and the quarantine thing, it's going to have to be a, you know, a not a Trump guy, but my God, I hope nothing bad happens. I, uh, I hope uh, he's in a state in his health where it's an issue how to do the debate. So probably it'll be, it'll have to be some kind of a live stream like on uh, Zoom or Microsoft Teams or, you know, since it's a president and a presidential candidate, I'm hoping they've got something a little better than that. But, you know, it'll have to be some kind of a virtual thing. So we'll see what happens. Uh, I know Trump doesn't perform as well in that kind of a setting. So yeah, we'll just have to see. So uh, again, you know, because it's already happened. At the... No, actually that debate hasn't happened yet by the time you're watching this, unless you waited till after Friday night. So uh, yeah, uh, moving on to happier things, because uh, I don't have a lot of stuff and it's late. I really want to get to bed and I already filmed talky t stuff for a video that I filmed a writing sample way last summer and I just like Aah! so uh, I'm all messed up but anyway my uh, iPhone now has a new version of Evernote on it and uh, it's looking pretty good I'm looking forward to it uh, for my laptop and hopefully that's coming soon. It sounds like it is. So uh, I use it as, at a production level more on my laptop and on my school machine. So yeah, maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe in the next couple of weeks I'll be able to say something intelligent about Evernote. So uh, I have liked the online version, which is a preview of what's going to come on the machines. So uh, we'll just have to see. But uh, yeah. Finally, progress. That's been a, a long time in coming. And uh, I think a lot of people have given up on Evernote. Uh, and, and Evernote definitely uh, at one time had the market to itself, but now it's got competitors like Notion and uh, I think Coda is one. There's a couple of them. And Google has Google Keep. There's Apple Notes. There, it's not just uh, Evernote out there anymore. OneNote, Microsoft's OneNote, which I have to use at school. Not a big fan of it, but I have to use it. So, uh, oh, did I just criticize my school? I am so sorry. <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah, that's where we're at. So, uh, I'm going to go to bed. I don't know what night I'm going to edit the edit this this week, but I am too tired to edit it tonight, and I've got a week, so who cares? Okay, one other fun topic. I uh, was Googling alternatives to Amazon. Um clothing, books, and, you know, other stuff I buy uh, for reasons of my own. Because um, I haven't been out of my tiny little North Dakota town since flipping May, uh, other than a brief trip to another tiny little North Dakota town a month ago. But, uh, so any of my shopping, my other than what I can get here locally, has been online. And I just don't like giving my money to Jeff Bezos. So, uh, looking at alternatives, anyway, I found one called Biblio.com, which uh, a whole bunch of used bookstores all over the country are part of. And uh, you know, with the upcoming Dune movie, uh, which I'm still very excited to see, I decided to purchase the Dune books. Now, Frank Herbert's dead, so I don't really care if I give him more money. Uh, so, and I usually buy used books if I can anyway. But So I went on the line and I got the hardcover of all six books. Uh, the original Dune I had uh, in a very nice Barnes & Noble edition, but uh, the rest of them I was able to get used. So uh, 
they all arrived this week. Very excited about that. Uh, I read Dan Simmons' The Terror over the summer. Got a hard cover of that. I, uh, yeah, I went a little nuts with the spending on books, but I, why not? <laughs> it was fun. And uh, now I'm rereading Dune. I finished Dune, uh, finished Dune Messiah, and I'm working through Children of Dune now. So uh, going at a good clip. And uh, yeah, it's interesting to come back to as an adult. So some night when I'm more awake, I'll may have to talk about that. So anyway, if videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens, both new and old, and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And what do you think? Should Parker bring back some of their inks of the past? Maybe not Super Chrome, but some of the others? Let us know down in the comments. And what are your favorite alternatives to Amazon? You know, I mentioned Biblio and BarnesandNoble.com. Maybe it's a local store. Maybe it's somewhere else online. Let us know down in the comments. So as always, I want to thank you for watching. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.